it's normal to be tired, okay? But it's not normal to be exhausted all the time. And bear in mind that the, the general comrades plans that you are following, that you've gotten off the internet, either the ones I wrote that are on the comrades website or plans that you may have picked up somewhere else, if you are part of the Coach Perry community, bear in mind that those plans are written with a general situation in mind and your own situation could be very different. Your experience levels are different. What you are doing in and around your lives in terms of minding children or not, um, in terms of your involvement with your children's school or not, your work situation, all of our work situations are vastly different. You know, if you are someone who's standing all day, if you're someone who has to move things and pick up things, if you're somebody who sits at a desk all day, you know, our situations are different. And therefore, when we get into this period, we are going to respond a little bit differently. We are going to be a bit tired. That's fine. Because we do want to induce fatigue. And as a, as a kind of general rule of thumb, if you're feeling a little bit tired and your legs are quite tired, Welcome on to the next edition of Up. We are inching ever closer to the 9th of June to Comrades Marathon 2024. My name is Brad Adult. I've got the official Comrades Marathon coach, Lindsay Parry, with us. Lindsay, how's it? I am excellent, Brad. Thank you. Good. Uh, the dust has settled after a two oceans weekends. And mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people out running. It was amazing. I, I was along the side of the road. I knew you were as well. Just amazing to see so many people out there and uh, so many people sort of shouting, uh, seeing us on the side of the road, which is which is pretty cool. But let's before we dig into what we actually want to chat about in this podcast, because we're going to be talking about sort of like the the, the fatigue of being in peak training, because that's where we are right now, smack bang in the middle of it. And then also just how to jig and rejig our strength and cross training. But let's just talk a little bit about coming out of oceans. Where should we be right now? How should we be feeling and what should we be doing? Yeah, so just to reiterate what we discussed last week, and that is literally that if you ran oceans, regardless of whether you raced it or not, you've got to take stock. Um, and it's 56 Ks with some big climbs and some long, long downs. So you are going to, you are going to be tender this morning and that's okay. That's normal. Um, if you ran hard, you're going to be more than 10. You're going to be walking around. Um, yeah, you won't have to tell people, um, that you ran oceans. You know, they often say, how do you know that somebody's run oceans? Oh, that they'll tell you, well, if you raced it, you don't need to tell anyone because it'll be like, Hey, why are your legs sore? you'll be able to tell them you, you won't be able to walk properly. But for all of us, <clears throat> oh, well, I didn't run, but yeah, for those that are that did run, you are going to be a little bit tender. That's normal. So you have to recover from that effort, take a few days off, bounce back from it. And if you're super, super sore, you really just have to take off the whole week and make sure that you recovered properly. But kind of for everyone else, um, as you said, Brad, absolute peak training, uh, we covered last week why um, recovery is so important. So just when the recovery weeks come up, take note of them. Don't try and do extra. Make sure that you recover properly. Stay mentally and physically fresh uh, as we go. You are going to be fit. You are strong. You're running well. You know, the, the topics that we've addressed as we are going along are, are not by accident. So because you are are um, doing well and strong. You are going to be running those PBs. That's why we covered that a few podcasts ago. Um, I think what will happen for some people now, particularly if you have done a few more races than you're supposed to, particularly if you have PB'd kind of every week, is that this is the period when people really start to get tired and they get into the business end of the training um and so yeah we need to talk a little bit on how do we manage that because we definitely too far away to properly freshen up in terms of a taper um but of course there are lots of little things that we can do now to help you cope and to stay on track with the the, the main bulk of the training which is really what we're trying to do for um comrades yeah, and that, you talk about being too far away for the, for tapering. That's probably one of the big mistakes that I made in in my first one that I failed at was I 
I thought I could start my tape in March after I'd run the Vile Marathon, which is a big mistake in case anybody's <laughs> wondering. But uh, yeah, it is slightly too far out, but there are lots of people that are almost like the, the walking wounded. They look like zombies where you just like uh, are out on your feet most of the time. You can't figure out if you're tired again or still tired. It's just like you are knackered at this yeah. time of training. And Lindsay, first of all, is that normal? Like, is it okay to be feeling as fatigued as, as people are feeling now? And second of all, how do we how do we manage that process? Yeah, I think that's that's the key. Is it normal to be it's normal to be tired, okay? But it's not normal to be exhausted all the time. And bear in mind that the the general comrades' plans that you are following, that you've gotten off the internet, either the ones I wrote that are on the comrades website or plans that you may have picked up somewhere else. If you are part of the Coach Perry community, bear in mind that those plans are written with a general situation in mind and your own situation could be very different. Your experience levels are different. What you are doing in and around your lives in terms of minding children or not, um, in terms of your involvement with your children's school or not, your work situation, all of our work situations are vastly different. You know, if you are someone who's standing all day, if you're someone who has to move things and pick up things, if you're somebody who sits at a desk all day, you know, our situations are different. And therefore, when we get into this period, we are going to respond a little bit differently. We are going to be a bit tired. That's fine, because we do want to induce fatigue. And as a as a kind of General rule of thumb, if you're feeling a little bit tired and your legs are quite tired, but when you go out and run 15 to 20 minutes into the run, you actually feel quite fine. And once you're going, everything feels good. You're enjoying your running. That, that I would describe as a kind of normal fatigue. But if you're really tired all the time, if you're struggling to get through meetings, if you can't concentrate when you're trying to do things at work, if your legs just feel so tired all the time that the thought of walking to the lunch canteen or taking a flight of stairs is just too much, now that's too tight. We, that's not how tired we, we want to be. And, and, you know, as Brad alluded to there, you, you don't know if you're tired for today or you're still tired from yesterday. That That's not the kind of fatigue that we want. And if you find yourself there, then we have to create some little bit of extra recovery. That doesn't mean that we start tapering. We look at our plan and we go, right, what are the key sessions that are in my plan at the moment? Okay. Um, let's say, for example, you've managed to hang on to your strength training now all the way to this point, and you're doing a cross training session or two in the week, plus you've got your four runs. You'd have a look at that and you'd go, yeah, okay, I can definitely strip out some cross training here. I don't need to carry on going with a strong cross training i want to give myself a little bit of bandwidth here to to recover better so we can take out a cross training for sure get into the next week or so is there some improvement when we've just backed off a little bit no i'm still really really struggling okay i can strip out one of these strength training sessions now we're down a cross training we're down a strength training that should now be making a really significant impact in your training if you've already stripped things out, you're running four days a week, but you like literally just can't deal and, and you're struggling. Then we look at the week and we go, okay, we've got an interval session there. We've got a long midweek run in there. We've got a very long run on Saturday and a medium long run on Thursday. All right, let's modify that. I'm going to do half of my long run Sunday. So I'll do long, long run and then a much shorter run on Sunday. And then maybe my, my midweek medium run, you know, I can do two thirds of it instead of doing the full thing. So those are really the changes we can make in the short term so that we keep training, keep doing the long run that we need to do to just keep working towards that psychological barrier of running 88 kilometers. But we can really just analyze and keep in what's important, but build in some bandwidth for more recovery. Here's a fun fact for you. Your body cannot tell the difference between training stress, work stress, family stress, psychological stress. It doesn't, it doesn't know the difference. So if you've got lots of these things coming from all sides, then your cortisol is going to be really, really high. And we can only operate on that 
those high cortisol, adrenaline, you know, we can only operate on that for so long. So you're going to start coming down. You're going to feel bad. You're not going to be able to sleep well. Um, your appetite's going to be suppressed. So you, there will be signs to you that, geez, I'm just not coping with what's going on. And very often the, the work, the family, and any other stresses that you've got in your life, normally those are not easily modifiable. So then we've got to look to the training and we've got to go, okay, I can't fit all this in. What can I fit in that will keep me on track to my comrade's dream, but it just gives me some breathing room so that I can recover from both the training and this constant assault that I'm dealing with in my everyday life. Gee, Linz, I, I got quite excited there when you were, when you said fun fact. I thought you were going to tell me that sixty eight percent of runners who start with an injury don't finish comrades. I, I got I was like, no, I can't take a, a shot there. That's the drinking game. But I brought it in. So now, if you are playing the drinking game post comrades, know. there's one for you in this episode. I'm I'm glad you did. And let's be honest, that's why we are going. Like, listen, guys, if you are tired all the time, plowing through is not the answer. Because if you get injured, you are making it very difficult for yourself to finish comrades and especially you know we are in peak training now so the psychological blow of getting injured now is also quite big because now is the time you know we spoke many weeks ago about how important it is to recognize that i've got an injury and then to stop and sort it out to be honest that's never been more important message than right now but people won't hear it because they'll be like I'm in the middle of peak training. I've only got a few weeks left. If I just get through these weeks, then I will taper. And that is just not sound logic or thinking. It's even more important now to swallow three days than to plow on and turn that into two weeks. Two weeks now is disastrous. A few days now is not. Yeah, Lindsay, you talk about the fatigue. Uh, we we do a lot of work in like the over fifties with over fifties runners, so like fifties, sixties, and and one thing that you found in your experience is obviously the older we get, the 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 more we need recovery and the more deliberate we have to be about this, and and that running in fatigue as we get older and is is not a normal thing. Like you've got to manage that cycle because if you keep digging yourself into the hole that's the next logical step like if you keep running when you're tired or when you're in pain the next step is getting injured and and as you said losing two weeks now could risk your comrades it could be catastrophic yeah no it could and it's definitely going to impact on your overall goal so you know i think i, I always when i when i say these things i always feel the most pressure for the like 11 40 to 12 hour people it's like if you get injured now then you are you are in trouble you know if, if i'm training for a bull run and i get injured now and i miss two weeks okay well now i'm running for a 940 950 and I'm, I'm getting I'm, I'm still my chance of getting a medal are still extremely high um so for most people it's, it's catastrophic in terms of their goal but for that like thousand people who finish in the last half an hour of comrades it's it's catastrophic it's the difference between whether they can finish or don't finish so if you are struggling to cope with the training we've got to modify it okay we'll go let's go back to january when we were talking about running 40 to 50 k's a week and if you run 50 k's a week for six months you're going to run a thousand k's you run a thousand k's you're going to you're going to finish comrades so that's kind of what your mentality has to be um if you do pick up a little niggle it's better to just stop take stock go back to this like idea of being consistent in 40 to 50 k's a week rather than chasing big numbers to just make sure that you so yeah if you're not coping pull it back a little bit make sure you're recovering properly make sure that you get to the start of race day in a couple of weeks time um, or, or to the taper actually in a couple of weeks time um, without being injured. Yeah, Lindsay, you you bring up such an important point there because I think we all fall into the trap where you, you think that a, a specific session is going to make or break your comrades, like one long run 
or and it's particularly around the long run. It's not it's not any other sessions. It is the long runs where you feel that you have to do this run, otherwise your comrades is blown. And the truth of the matter is, if you're going into that run fatigued, maybe you have a niggle, and you force yourself to do that run, you're risking trashing your comrades by doing that run. Mm. Leaving it out is not going to make in the great in the greater scheme of things. Leaving out a long run is not going to make a difference. Yeah, and for the vast majority of comrades running, the risk is not the session they leave out. Because for the vast majority of comrades runners, we're not looking for excuses not to do sessions. Okay, let's let's face it. Okay, so honestly, if you miss your long run this week, you're not going to be sitting next week coming up with another excuse to miss another long run. That's just not how we wired. So the reality is, is that it's not the session that you leave out that costs you comrades. It's the session that you do that you shouldn't have done. That's the one that costs you comrades. I love that. That is, that is flipping gold there. Lindsay, as far as the, the folks you mentioned, if you are feeling slightly fatigued, cutting back on the strength training, cutting back on the cross training. What if someone is feeling good? They managing mm. perfectly fine with the mileage. They're still doing strength training. They're still doing cross training. When do they need to start cutting back or when, when do they need to start cutting back on the strength and, and cross training? So if everything is feeling good, you're going along nicely. Um, then honestly, when it comes to the taper, that's when you'll cut back and you'll start pulling things out. Um, just don't, you know, I'll, I'll go back to three weeks ago, I think, or four weeks ago, you know, this idea around smashing PBs all the time. Um, if, if you're handling everything, just don't treat. There's a few long runs coming up and, and um, in a couple of weeks' time, we've got the the comrades long run. So if you haven't done a two oceans or whatever and, you, and you're doing a 50K, for example, then just make sure that on that day that you're not out there proving to yourself how fit you are don't capitalize on how you're feeling now by pushing much harder so i wouldn't and this goes especially if it's your first comrades if you're an experienced runner you've done a lot of comrades and you're feeling like that now it would be worth having a conversation around okay well should i could i and should i fit in more training and the answer might be yes in that scenario um, and you would then like really monitor you would really, you would really monitor yourself to kind of make sure that you don't now throw yourself off off the other end. But if you if you knew this is your first comrades, I wouldn't even risk it. I'd be like everything's going really well now, and what I would especially not be tempted to do is to like okay, well I feel so good. In two weeks' time, I think it's three weeks' time, I'm not looking at the, the calendar, but as I say this, but just as an example, you get there and it's like in two or three weeks, I've got my comrades long run. So I really don't feel like I need my recovery week this week, but I'll make sure that I tape it properly when I get there. Don't do that. So that's like a real, let's, let's not do that. Keep taking your recovery weeks, even if you don't feel like you need them because that's going to allow you to just keep managing and keeping up with that training load. And it's going to see you having a really great day on, on race day. Let's talk about the the people who train for comrades. Like I went to varsity and all my varsity mates are chuckling because I know exactly what I'm going to say now, who, who are, they, they were pretty tidy in January and February and they sort of, uh, didn't do too much in March either, but now April's here and it's time to 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 do your peak training. What about cramming? Like if somebody's feeling like they're behind, and maybe they are behind on the mileage, maybe they haven't done what they were supposed to do in the first three months of the year. Now we're sitting uh, middle of April and things are, are looking dire. Is now the time to catch up? Running the Comrades Marathon doesn't have to be scary and intimidating. Just thinking about running 90 kilometers or 56 miles should give you butterflies in your stomach. Add to that the hills you have to run up and down and having to do it in under 12 hours. The thought of it is enough to freak the most seasoned runner out. Never mind a newbie to ultra running or a Comrades Marathon novice. As much as Comrades is a physical challenge, it's just as much a mental challenge. The constant mental gymnastics of second-guessing yourself takes its toll. 
Am I training enough? How long should my long runs be? How many marathons should I run? What does this pain in my knee mean? My ankle is sore. Should I rest or run? And then the two big ones. Am I fast enough? And will I finish? The questions never stop. The constant worrying is exhausting. And that's exactly why we've created the Comrades Marathon Training Roadmap. It's a proven step-by-step -step training plan to get you from where you are today to having a Comrades medal around your neck without the stress and worry. Knowing that you've done what it takes to finish the ultimate human race, feeling strong and in control. Ensuring that you arrive at the start line fit and most importantly, injury-free, because more than 64% of those who didn't finish the race last year started with an injury. The Comrades Marathon Training Roadmap guides you through every step of your Comrades journey. Training, qualifying, tapering, and race day. We've got you covered every step of the way. Simply head over to coachparry.com forward slash up to get access to it now, or simply click on the link in the description. That's coachparry.com forward slash up. Now back to the podcast. You just really wanted to hear 68% again, didn't you, Brad? So, so honestly, I mean, that's that's an even worse reason to cramp. So if you are in that boat, if you started late, if you had a long-term injury or a long-term illness, or you've come out of a, a huge work project where you just couldn't get to the training that you wanted to get to, you have thankfully qualified, so you've got to start on the a place and start line, then you've just got to think to yourself about consistency. Okay. You are still not going to build up. You don't want to ramp up too quickly. You literally just want to be consistent and get yourself to the point where you can just about manage the comrades race distance. So you would go in at like mid volume, bang out week in, week out. You know, you, you're going to hit your 25s to 30s, maybe, um, very consistently, perhaps do one marathon to 45 Ks, but your best friend in this scenario is I'm just going to be consistent. I'm going to just run three to four days a week with some strength training, and I'm going to make sure that I get to my eight, eight to 12 Ks in the week, and I'm going to get to my 20, 25, 30 as I'm building up on the weekend and just stay consistent. That's That will be your absolute best friend line up feeling fresh, line up with no niggles, suffer for the last 30 Ks, but you get a finisher's medal. Yeah, and, and the truth is everybody suffers for the last 30 Ks. You're just going to, that's exactly what it is. Not like you're going to suffer less, you're still going to suffer. That's no, no, I mean, one, one of my favorite comrade stories that I'm always telling people, you know, I've been in this coaching game for a long time, um, but I also, I did struggle with comrades initially. Like, I, it was amazing to me that I could get literally within a, a second of my predicted finishing times on everything up to two oceans. Like if I said I was going to be there at that time, I was there at that time. But geez, comrades, I mean, I, I couldn't even get it to the right hour, never mind the, the right second. Um, and I tried training in various ways, lower volumes with very high intensity, massive volumes with very low intensity, everything in between. And I was running with my dad and I was like, yeah, dad, you know, I'm, I'm just – not built for comrades, you know, like I, I love running. I do really well for other stuff, but comrades clearly not my thing. doesn't matter how I train. As soon as I get like into those late sixties, I am just so done. I cannot, like my legs are so sore. And my dad looks at me and he goes late sixties. So like 20, 20 Ks to go. So I was like, yeah, it's like every time around 20, 25 k's to go and he goes geez you know when we were training hard for comrades we used to say like if you only hurt for 20 k's you had a great comrades if you were sore for 30 k's you had a pretty good day out and if you were sore for longer than that you, know, you probably didn't train enough for for comrades so yeah exactly that and once that kind of penny dropped <laughs> the next time i got to 75 k's or whatever it was i started to really hurt and I was like oh I'm supposed to hurt now and I I just realized that all those other times my legs were sore but they were working just fine and I was just giving up absolutely Lindsay I mentioned early on that this time where people are just like you can't decide if you tired again or still tired but there's also the 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 added benefit of increased appetite when you're training as hard as we are now. So 
let, let's talk a little bit about that. So for for most part, runners are like, you know what, they can literally eat and eat and eat and they won't put on weight. But what about runners like me who potentially do want to lose a little bit of weight? They don't want to carry extra Ks or pounds on Comrades Race Day. How do you manage this extra eating at this time of the of, of the Comrades training block and making sure that you don't put too much in, that you're not burning enough? Yeah, and I think I think – what you want to do there is make sure that you are eating calor calorifically dense foods. Okay. So out, outside of your actual exercise window. So during exercise, and then let's call it the hour after exercise there, you can afford to eat like fairly processed foods. Um, and the, the carbohydrates that you then absorb then will, essentially find their way to the muscle reload muscle glycogen but outside of that and in between you want to eat quite um cal calorifically dense foods and that means that you want to eat as much prepared food as you can not processed food so you want to shop fresh you want to make sure that there's um, enough fiber in the food so that it can really help with that feeling of um satiety you want to make sure that there's some fats in there that also go a long way to making you feel full because the simpler the foods that you stick in the quicker your body will burn through them because your metabolism is is properly up there that's that's why you've got this like constant you've basically got a constant furnace burning when you are training as much as you are training now and that furnace burns up simple carbs like nobody's business. And then it makes you think you need food. Uh, and then you just keep eating, keep eating. So you want to go for fresh, lots of fiber, bit of fat. Make sure you've got proteins with most of your meals. So that means if you're, a, if you're not a meat eater, if you're vegetarian, you really want to make sure that you are getting in enough um, proteins in your diet. Because otherwise you're just going to be ravenous and and one you eat all the time um, and similarly you know vegetarian vegan diets if you're not careful you can eat a lot of foods that are are low in fiber and then you have to eat massive amounts of food um, to meet your energy demand never, never mind just feeling full um, so yeah those are some of the tips there brad plan ahead make sure that you're eating um, self-prepared high in fiber high in protein bit of fats so that you can really deal with that feeling of hunger but you don't want to be starving yourself that's the one thing you you don't want to do yeah because that, that is the danger i mean that that is i mean you you are then looking for trouble i mean if you are not putting enough fuel in the tank particularly when you're training as hard as as you are what, what, what are some of the the dangers of doing that well, before I jump into that, actually, there's one thing that I just remembered that I and I actually always forget about this fact. Um, and that is that, you know, particularly it's it's not as hot now, but I mean, flip, we've had like quite the summer across the whole country. Um, and so that's another thing just to take into account is that often if we aren't getting enough fluids in, what your brain does is it goes, I'm hungry, because in most foods, when we eat them and they break down the chemical compounds, it releases fluid into the body. And so one of the mechanisms of your brain, if you're ignoring the fact that you're thirsty all the time, if you're not getting any enough fluids, is that it goes, oh, I'm hungry, so that it can get the sandwich and break that down and release the, the the fluid so so that's just another thing to take into account is that you can be feeling hunger all the time because you actually just need to drink more so that's that's that side and then yeah i mean on the on the other side of the coin if you are trying to lose weight and you're ignoring these feelings of of hunger and thinking oh well it's normal to be hungry because i'm trying to lose weight of course i'm going to be hungry i have to calorie restrict if you're not careful about how you do that you can go into relative energy deficiency. And if you're in there for a prolonged period of time, you can get all sorts of metabolic issues, um, decreasing metabolism, lethargy, listlessness, increase in injury. Um, and if it, if it goes on for a, you know, a few months, then that's when you are now at risk to stress fractures in the short term, 
osteoporosis in the long term. So yeah, you definitely don't want to starve yourself. If you're hungry, try and figure out why you're hungry, eat the right foods, get enough fluid, and try and deal with it that way. Yeah, Lindsay, then also this time, and we've spoken about it quite a bit on this series of podcasts, but particularly, I just wanted to mention it again, when we are training as much as we are, the importance of sleep. And I know you also aren't a huge fan of saying you have to sleep so many hours a night, but just getting a little bit extra, even if you only, like, let's say you only sleep five hours a night, which isn't ideal, but let's say you only do, just getting a half an hour extra or an hour extra is going to make a massive difference at this this point in your training. Look, now, now where we are, I mean, we are, we can smell comrades from here. I mean, I know we've still got a good couple of weeks to go, but we can smell comrades from here. So if you can't get the, the motivation to look after yourself now, you never will. And honestly, Brad, half an hour extra sleep every night, it will make the most ridiculous difference to your recovery. An extra hour every night next level so i mean you literally just want to tell your significant other listen i need an extra 45 to 60 minutes five nights a week for the next six weeks i mean because then you'll be into the taper you will have broken the back of all the training you will give yourself the most you give yourself the best opportunity of not getting sick of not having compromised immune system of not getting injured i mean if you can do that then that is yeah you you are shooting the lights out and and brad you've asked me now questions about nutrition i mean hungry all the time and you've asked me about sleeping well and being tired those are two things that we want now we do want to be tired we do want to be hungry if you are those two things we can be fairly certain that we are in a pretty good physiological state okay if you're training super super hard and you're struggling to fall asleep, and you have no appetite, you're struggling to eat, those two things tell us that we are under huge physiological stress, um, and that we are about to run into trouble. Yeah, so those those are, are, are levers that you can really monitor uh, now, that is going to make a huge difference in your training. Lindsay, before we wrap up, just a, a quick heads up, we are doing another women's webinar this week. Uh, if you would like to register for that, the link is in the description of this video and podcast. The last one was phenomenal. Shona Hendricks on our team hosted that, and it was superb. So to all the ladies out there, make sure you get onto that webinar this week. Uh, they are gold. They they are really, really good, definitely worthwhile. And then the next general webinar for, for everyone is happening a week from now. So the link to that is also in uh, in the in the description. Make sure you sign up for that one as well. Uh, and then next week, Linz, we're going to be talking. It's basically six weeks out to Comrades next weekend, uh, and we're going to be talking a little bit about, particularly for the novices, their long run. So the long run for the novices, six weeks out, why it's so far out, and how they need to manage themselves from there going into Comrades. So uh, a big week this week and next week, uh, and we're nearly there. When when you said you can smell Comrades, I thought it was Pine Town, but it's definitely Comrades. So that's that's good news. So chief between. I'm having a full go. The Cape Tonians are hating me. People in Pine Town are going to be hating me. I'm not going to be able to leave home soon, unfortunately. Uh, but Linz, as always, great to catch up. Look forward to to chatting again next week. Cheers, Brad.